Former Clico policyholders finally begin receiving claims payouts close to half million dollars per month. That's our top story in our Barbados Today evening news update for Wednesday, March the 7th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. After a long, frustrating eight years of waiting, thousands of policyholders of the collapsed Clico International Life Insurance Company have finally started receiving their outstanding claims payments at an average $400,000 a month. The revelation this morning from Cheryl Stenhouse, Chief Executive Officer of Resolution Life Insurance Company, the firm which has replaced Clico. We have commenced payments to our annuitants, those of you pensioners. Um, on average, that bill is about $400,000 per month. And we have provided payments for January and February um, of 2018. Thereafter, we will be ensuring that current payments to those policyholders remain on track and that the backlog of amounts that is owed to those persons is settled within the 10 month, sorry, the six month time frame that we originally would have outlined. And speaking at the end of a tour of Res Life headquarters in Worthing Christ Church, Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair noted that annuities and pensions started being paid out from the first of this month. He said government would continue to support ResLife as part of a wider restructuring of the financial and regulatory systems to ensure a debacle similar to Clico's did not happen again. And with good regulation, uh, with companies that are operating appropriately, and with good vigilance of the public, because the public still has a responsibility to exercise vigilance outside of the regulatory authorities on companies uh, that operate in Barbados and the Caribbean. I believe that an, uh, a situation similar to what, um, um, what would have occurred with Clico ought not to be repeated in Barbados uh, going forward. Minister of Education Ronald Jones says he is not at all pleased with the manner in which the recurring cow itch problem affecting the Blackman and Gullop Primary School is being handled. Today, education officials were forced to close the Staple Grove Christchurch School for the second time in as many weeks after teachers walked off the job complaining that the problem had not yet been resolved even though the school was subjected to an industrial cleanup last month. I was informed today that school had to be closed again. I was very disappointed because one talk that had gone away of the college. Um, but when, when they clean it up, I heap it up without burning it. Um, you're going to burn it so all those parts are burnt. You're going to have, even if the air is clear, you're going to still have the parts that um, being exposed and bursting and affecting anything that went away. Okay. So that seems to have been the case in this instance. I would hope that they're able to bring it under um, complete control um, over the next, over, the, over this event or something like that. Consumer rights advocate Malcolm Gibbs Tate is calling on the Fair Trading Commission as well as government to come clean on the pending sale of the Barbados National Oil Company Limited to the Sir Kiffin Simpson led petrol giant Saul. Gibbs State, the Director General of the Barbados Consumers Research Organization, was one of the first to object to the proposed deal after it was made public more than a year ago. The FTC has since issued a four-page ruling last November in which it said it found the proposed U.S. $100 million deal to be anti-competitive and therefore would only approve the transaction if certain issues were addressed. Gibbs said he was puzzled that the FTC had not given any updates since the issuing of the ruling with Saul indicating that it was still interested in pursuing the deal and government still counting on the proceeds from that transaction. While demanding greater transparency, he warned that the regulatory agency must carry out its duties independently. We, we do not have what we consider to be a transparent government. We haven't had that for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe that is something that the electorate will take note of and see that it doesn't happen again like that. We, 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 we should be transparent in the way we do things. Mm -hmm. But 
I, I notice that um, things are happening sometimes three years ago and, and only now we're getting to, to, to get the, some of the facts, I better say. It isn't really good enough. In sports, wicketkeeper batsman Mohamed Shahzad has been suspended for Afghanistan's upcoming two matches in the ICC Cricket World Cup Qualifier 2018 after his accumulated demerit points reached four within a 24-month period. Now, this followed his latest breach of the ICC Code of Conduct, for which he received a 15% fine and one demerit point. During a thrilling match against Zimbabwe at the Bulawayo Athletic Club yesterday, Shazad was found guilty of breaching the rule which relates to abuse of cricket equipment or clothing, ground equipment or fixtures and fittings during an international match. Yesterday's incident happened after Shazad being caught by Malcolm Waller of Tendai Shatara for 30 in the ninth over hit his bat hard onto the pitch adjacent to the match pitch, which took out a significant piece of the turf. There's regional and international news after this short break. Welcome back with news from the region now. More than 4,000 people are now awaiting cataract surgery in Trinidad and Tobago. And opposition United National Congress Member of Parliament, Dr. Saroj Rambushan, says he is viewing with deep concern the plight of these people. He said it is inexcusable the failure of the Minister of Health to address the situation in a timely and compassionate manner. In more regional news, a rising spate of armed robberies against people leaving city banks is causing headaches for Ghana's crime chief, Paul Williams. The situation has forced Williams to call for a joint security solution. More in this HGPTV report. The number of people being held at gunpoint after withdrawing large sums of cash from banks has attracted the urgent attention of the Ghana police force, especially Crime Chief Paul Williams and his team of investigators over at the Criminal Investigations Department. That is a very, very serious concern. And the thing is that this approach in terms of dealing with this matter, I want to say very clearly that it needs a joint agency or a joint approach in terms of dealing with the situation. On February 21 last, an electrical contractor of Enmore Hope East Coast Demerara was robbed and shot after he had withdrawn more than $600,000 from a commercial bank on the east coast of Demerara. Exactly one day after that robbery, a senior official of CARICOM headquarters was shot and robbed shortly after leaving the very east coast bank. On the international scene now, at least three people have been seriously injured in a knife attack in the Austrian capital, Vienna, with the assailant possibly injuring a fourth nearby, and that's according to police. In a statement on Twitter, police say the attack happened this evening in central Vienna. They confirmed that three people had been stabbed and said there was another bodily injury with a knife nearby shortly afterwards. Police said... A link between the two attacks is subject to ongoing investigations. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening.